Hey, good morning, church. How are you? Man, what incredible worship. I know we're doing good because we slept in the Holiday Inn Express last night. So we're doing great. Thank you for allowing us to be here. I want you to know how much we love your pastor. Um, we met them just months back and had this kinship just automatically like we have known them forever. You folks are blessed to see a person, persons where God can take you from to where they are today, leading this congregation. Thank you, Pastor, for these few minutes. Um, we are Tim and Tammy Leathers. We are the founders of LifeHouse, which is a home for women that are struggling with life-controlling issues and addiction. And how we got here is a really strange thing, because I was the chief of police in Wilton, Iowa, for 15 years, and I also pastored a church there, bivocational. My wife was a teacher, and uh, she went to work for a home as a women's home director. And then God began to call us. As I got closer to retirement age, I could retire at 30. So, um, okay, that no, wasn't true. Uh, 55, and uh, we, I retired as the chief of police in Wilton. We, we resigned from our church and became full-time missionaries, U.S. missionaries with the Assemblies of God. And we are so excited of what we get to do. And it's because of churches, individuals, organizations that stand beside us is the reason why we're able to touch lives for the kingdom of God. My wife is going to tell you about one of them here tonight. Good morning. I want to introduce you to someone. Her name is Lauren. Lauren uh, grew up in a home where she had a parent who had severe depression issues. And she saw a lot of things from a very young age that she should not have seen. And with that, she was an introvert and had a hard time making friends. And when she got to be 11 years old, the only friends that she really made friends with were older than her. And she started smoking marijuana at 11 years old. And by the time she was, doing, she was 14, she was already um, abusing meth. From that moment on, she was arrested several times. She ended up having two boys. And um, one horrific day, she was in her boyfriend's apartment, and they came in, the police came in and raided it with her and her young children. They took her to jail, but they gave her a choice, and they said, you can either stay in jail, or you can go back to those beautiful boys and be the mom that you're supposed to be. So she went back to her boys. But some of us know that the draw of addiction is much greater. And she ended up back in her meth addiction again. Her boys went to live with the father, and she ended up in prison in Mitchellville. 1.9 million women were released from prison in 2016. Research makes clear that women returning from prison have a significantly higher need for services than men. And why? Because women who can't secure safe housing may return to abusive partners or family situations for housing and financial reasons. And sometimes it's a really bad situation. According to reports, interventions should provide a safe, respectful environment, promote healthy relationships, address substance use, trauma, and mental health issues, provide women with opportunities to improve their socioeconomic conditions, establish comprehensive and collaborative community service, and prioritize women's empowerment, and provide help for family reunification. And LifeHouse's mission statement is, LifeHouse exists to provide a encouraging and safe environment to empower women on a journey to seek improvement in their health and give them hope and freedom from strongholds through education and spiritual direction so they can find their purpose through Christ and live a productive and addictive free life. Because we all know that there is absolutely no victory over addiction without Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen for that? Well, this is Lauren now. This is her with her boys. Um, actually, this has actually been a couple years ago, matter of fact. But when Lauren came to us, we picked her up from prison. She came with a little bitty box, and she hadn't seen or talked to her boys in two and a half years. So when she, by the time she came to us, within the first couple of weeks, she was calling them on the phone, little short conversations that now have just blossomed and bloomed. Lauren. Um, the next picture shows Lauren. Lauren is a worshiper. Oh, my goodness, she loves Jesus with her whole heart, and I love to watch Lauren worship. She now is our supervisor. She's graduated from, from LifeHouse and still lives with us. She graduated in 2020, 
and she is such a great asset to our women in our home. The next picture just shows a picture of some of our women that are or have been um, graduates of LifeHouse. And the next picture is a picture of our home, which was taken when we first moved in there, and it looks a lot better now than it does there. I need a new picture. <laughs> and the next picture is us in front of our home, because God gave us this, well, we were able to obtain and buy a 6,000-square-foot 6, home. So we were able to um, house many women. We provide 24 hours, seven-day-a-week care. We make sure that each resident gets the physical, mental, and spiritual needs met. We can take up to 12 women. We charge residents to come to LifeHouse zero. Many of them have burnt their bridges, and they don't know where to even get financial help for anything. So God told us when we started this ministry, don't charge them. And he has made a way through churches, individuals, and community support that we can take in women and financially be able to help them as well. We want to be a resource to churches like you. Every church, every person in here probably knows someone who struggles with addiction, man, women, men, women. We all struggle with addiction in some way, whether it's food, whether it's working too much, whether it's this little device that we carry in our pocket. <laughs> we all have something that we are addicted to. These women have addictions that absolutely ruin their life. Well, one of the things I talked about is if we can't, um, if we can help them in any way when they leave us after a year, that we can help them be able to secure employment. That is a big help to them because we don't want them going back to the people that they used to be with. And so they need to be able to care for themselves and for their children. So we have multiple ways that we do that. One of them is um, what we call Second Chance Thrift Store. We just opened this about eight weeks ago. We are so thrilled and happy to be able to have this. And we we teach them job skills. We teach them people skills. We teach them so many things by using this. Plus, it's a resource to LifeHouse financially. I'm going to let Tim tell you about the next few things. We're passionate about training women to be able to support themselves, as Tammy said, because a lot of times if they can't support themselves financially, they just go back. So we believe that a woman can do anything she sets her mind to. Can I get an amen, ladies? So a couple of things that we do, next slide shows our greenhouse. This is a, an aquaponics greenhouse. We had like 500 tilapia fish, and the, the water was put, pumped into these beds and uh, fed the plants, but um, we had an accident and all of our fish died. Um, now they're just fertilizer for our tomato plants. So... <laughs> But so we're starting all over. We're right now we're doing hydroponics, which we use uh, water soluble fertilizer, good fertilizer for that, and we were able to grow our plants. The next slide shows something that we're passionate, excited about. This is our new welding school. This is called Lifehouse Welding School. This is to teach women how to become welders because women make incredible welders. Can I get an amen? When I talk to when I talk to shops about welding. Most of the times they say the women are better welders than the men for a couple reasons. Number one, women take direction better than a man that's been welding for 20 years. <laughs> it's just a fact. You know, you're not going to tell me how to weld. But anyway, and uh, so, and we have a whole bunch of places that are, they don't care if they're felons. Matter of fact, I had one place that said, you, you know, some of our ladies that are going to learn how to weld are going to be felons. He goes, oh, we don't care as long as they've killed less than six people, we'll take them as a worker. So, <laughs> so well, okay, we, we got a few of those. So, but we're teaching them how to weld. This, we are so excited. We're kicking that off next month. Our instructor was the head instructor for John Deere in the Quad Cities. He's, um, he's the missions director for a church. And him and his wife now are missionaries part-time. And we have another gentleman from Waverly, Iowa. that's going to be traveling every weekend to help us. And every time we put a welder in the women's hand, they weld like pros. I don't weld against them because they can weld better than me. So anyway, that's pretty exciting. Um, the next slide is... Um, is just uh, inviting you to our table outside. Um, we want to be a resource for you. Take our card. If you know someone who is struggling with addiction, we can help ladies that are, that are struggling. We're a one-year program. And uh, also, this next slide is the, the passion of missions right here. This is the true definition of how missions work. You see that missionary that has waded out in the water after that one lost lamb. But you see, that missionary cannot do it without the local church that's hand in hand with them, standing there supporting them, praying for them, supplying them. 
Hand in hand can a missionary go into all the world and preach the gospel because Jesus told us to do just that. Because you see, if a missionary doesn't go, guess who has to go? You. You have to go because God commanded it. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. And that's what mission's all about. And I, I, like I said, I love this, this picture right here. We don't ask churches and individuals and people to stand behind us. It's easy to stand behind somebody. We say we need people to stand beside us, hold our hands to go into the mission field to reach the lost and the dying and those that the world has, has just pushed aside. So we want to say thank you, Pastor, for these minutes. Please come stop by our table, sign up for our, our uh, newsletter, and we'd love to talk more about LifeHouse. God bless you and your pastor.